sign on. So this video message is about the upcoming new moon solar eclipse that's happening on February 15th, 2018. So it's really the bookend of an eclipse that happened back in August 21st, 2017. So whatever started to dissolve around that time, it's in its death throes now. So August 21st, it was an early warning call. So it could have been an insight that you had, a conversation, something out of the ordinary, right, where you made a step forward. So Earth is shifting into another vibration, which means higher consciousness is coming more into physical form. So this means that people are making choices and they're either choosing to join with this new earth or they're clinging to the old earth. And at one point in our human evolution, we had the Neanderthals, which were the older species, and then we had the new evolved Cro-Magnon. And these two species coexisted on the earth for more than 5,000 years until the Neanderthals went completely extinct. So this is what we're going to experience as this new solar plexus mutation starts to take hold. We'll have the, the Homo sapiens living from fear, right? Competition and defensiveness and aggression and me oriented versus the new Homo sanctus living from love, trust, cooperation, and service to the whole. We orient it. So you may be already seeing this shift in consciousness, if you're aware. So this solar eclipse coming up, it marks a brand new beginning for us all, right, that are choosing this new earth. You may be feeling it yourself, right, insomnia and feeling extra tired at times, things like that. So the last few weeks, we've been letting go of our codependence in our relationships. And collectively, we've been letting go of our dependency on old status quo belief systems, right? We're leaving this old paradigm rooted in fear. And can you feel this yourself, that you're just done with being a slave in your job? You're tired of being undervalued and not appreciated. Maybe you're tired of this old role you've been playing in your relationships. Maybe you're really starting to see the inequality of power in our world. So the building is burning down. It's an inferno, right? And the institutions are starting to dissolve because they're rooted in fear. They've been built by an old species. So do you go back into a burning, crumbling building to try to save it? That would be insane, wouldn't it? Yeah, people are trying to do this. No, you let the, burn, you let the building burn down on its own. And you shift your focus away from the burning building over here to build something new and innovative for the future that's rooted in love, right? That's rooted in truth. So this solar eclipse is pointing us to claim our position as a co-creator of this world. In order to be a co-creator, you also have to be responsible for what you create in your reality. So there's no room for victim in this new paradigm. So you can see here, the sun, the moon, and Mercury are all in the 30th gene key at the time, the exact time of the solar eclipse. And interestingly, at the time of the eclipse on August 21st, it was in, the sun was in the position of the 29th gene key, which is the programming partner of the 30th. So basically these two energies are very intertwined. So this is the shadow of desire. And in ancient spiritual teachings, it said that desire was a force that you must fight and resist, right, repress. And in shadow mining, 
when you fight the shadow, you actually feed it energy, you energize it, you make the shadow stronger this way. You can't street fight with your shadow. It just won't work. And think of religion, right? For example, taking a vow of celibacy. When people try to repress their sexual desire, what happens? That energy gets perverted and distorted and then expressed in unhealthy ways that are destructive to that person and many, many others. And also historically, religion has done this to women. Remember the witch burnings? It wasn't that long ago. That was the shadow of repressed sexual desire and it was projected onto women. It was the woman that tempted me. She made me do it. It's all her fault. I wouldn't feel these urges if she didn't exist. We must try to control her, right? The patriarchy. So trying to control women in an, in an attempt to control this inner evolutionary force of desire, it's not going to work. It hasn't worked. That experiment did not work and it's caused much damage throughout our human history. So let's explore this shadow of desire a little bit more. Desire is about temptation. And temptation is the desire to leave your temple. Temptation is the desire to leave your temple. So your center is your temple, right? The navel region, that's your center. This is your integrity. So the shadow of desire is to engage in spontaneous urges which threaten your long-term goals. So when you do indulge in your desires, it creates a guilt-shame cycle, which lowers your frequency. And the programming partner here is half-heartedness. Right? What a terrible duo. I half-heartedly commit to my spiritual practice, and along comes a desire to take me off my path that I follow. So, for example, you know, you may be attending a weekly Kundalini Yoga and meditation class once a week. Right? You're really doing something for your spiritual journey. And then suddenly this cute, cute person kind of shows up and invites you out for drinks at the same time as your class. Right. So you get pulled out of your center into this new desire. And then you're half hearted about your weekly commitment. So life tests our commitment all the time. You can bet on that. Life will test you and challenge you. So let's go back to the shadow of desire. So this physical body, your physical body, is filled with desires, cravings for things that you don't need. It just comes with this physical body. So, fat, you know, the factory model comes with desire. And everybody has desires. So it could be a desire for money, for fame, for recognition, for appreciation, for love, for knowledge, for power, for spiritual enlightenment. The list goes on and on and on and on. And you can't repress these desires or you can't try to exhaust them either. So it seems futile, doesn't it, this whole shadow of desire? And the ancient term for the shadow of desire is called the clinging fire, the clinging fire, right? The fire that you can't get rid of because desire sets your lower body, your lower chakras on fire, right? With this promise of fulfillment outside of you. So this particular gene key is part of the ring of purification along with the 13th, right? The shadow of discord I've already talked about in a previous video. And you can see here that it's in the self node of the moon position. And this is the karmic axis that we're in right now. So this is important. So our desires are being purified for this new age of Aquarius. And the future human will eventually be burned of all desire. Can you imagine? This means sexual desire will be short-circuited, right? Sexual desire won't exist anymore. 
we won't be at the mercy of our human desires. It's all going to be our relationships will be about conscious coupling, sacred marriage. So this is coming together for completely different reasons. It's coming together to serve one another in higher consciousness. And this in turn, among other things, will lower the human population so that the earth can restore herself. And that's why we're seeing more and more fertility issues. And this is only going to increase. It's about lowering the population of humanity. It's nature. It's natural. So desire in itself, it's a pure energy of longing. But the shadow mind grabs onto it and it points it out. Points it to something outside of you. Over there, over there, over there. Points it to a target. And it really has nothing to do with that target. So we must discern. And this is the gift of the 13, right? In the self-node position right now. Which desires are serving our evolution and our growth into this new earth? As opposed to which ones are taking us away from our evolution that are pulling us back down to the old earth? So it's really about paying attention. You know, to be awake is about being alert. It's about paying attention to your life. It takes discipline. So we must examine our desires. That's what this um, eclipse is showing us. We have to examine our desires. And what is this desire really about when you strip it away? What's this desire really about? You know, for example... You may have a desire to be in a partnership, an intimate partnership. Is that really the desire? Or is it really about my desire in avoiding facing myself? Is it a desire to avoid being alone? Right? Desires are all about chasing pleasure or avoiding pain. So the gift here, when you really face this in truth, is lightness. Lightness with commitment. So desire makes you feel heavy and half-hearted about your life. So this is about committing to the light. It's about committing to love. It's about allowing your old desires to burn away. Right? So maybe an old desire that you had to pursue a certain path Right? It's not, there's no juice there anymore for you. There's no energy. That's okay. So be light. Be flexible. And trust the energy of the moment. Trust in the energy of the moment. That's the gift of commitment. You're placing your trust in the energy of the now moment. Right? So if there's no energy for an old goal that you set, Last year, or when you were a child, let it go, right? You have to hold these desires with lightness. That's the gift. And if you're an indigo or a creative rebel, trust that seed that's inside you that I've talked about, that desires to bloom, to create something new and innovative for this new earth. And so the solar eclipse is telling us to commit to new desires that are aligned with the frequency of love, right? These are the desires that are coming deep from your soul. To commit to something new and innovative. It's telling us to hold our desires with lightness, with levity. And to remember that this life is a game. It's not to be taken so seriously. And that the foundation of all that we see is love. So choosing love is to choose this new earth. So don't be a Neanderthal. Choose to step into this new earth and become the new homo sanctus. This new human that's emerging. That you're a part of this great evolution into the Aquarian age that we're part of. And this ultimate desire... Right? The ultimate desire is to become one with Source. 
with the divine, with God. That's their ultimate purpose in this desire. So trust that. Instead of like projecting your energy outward, bring it back, right? The Quarian Age is all about turning us back inward. This is the, the revolution isn't out there. The revolution starts in here in each one of us. So it's bringing your energy back inside and allowing this mutation to happen inside your physical form. Okay. So a lot more to say as always, but I don't want to make these videos too, too, too long. So please subscribe to my channel. So click the red button below and the bell to be notified when I drop a video and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I post there every day about the energies of the day and receive a free audio to take the first steps towards your soul purpose. And also a reminder that my next live online program, so Activation for Indigos and Creative Rebels, starts March 18th, the time of the next new moon. And I'm going to write more about what those terms mean. I've gotten a couple emails about what is a Creative Rebel and is that me? Okay, so I'll put more of that information up. And all the links can be found below. So have a great week and a great solar eclipse. Sutton on.